introduce you uh, to a remarkable young man from a little suburb right outside of Houston, Texas, where we're from, called Friendswood. This young man's name is D. Fott, and he's a 17-year-old boy who suffers from a rare genetic disorder called osteogenesis imperfecta, which is more commonly referred to as brittle bones disease. So because of the disease, uh, D has really brittle bones. They fracture really easily. So if you were to take like the cell phone out of your pocket and you were to accidentally drop it on his wrist, there's a pretty good chance that his bones would break. And so you can imagine little accidents like that, things like that happen. And so over the course of D's lifetime, he's broken numerous bones. And because of that, he has stunted growth. So you can see in the picture, he's 17 years old, but he's only about three feet tall, which is about the average height of a three-year-old. And his bones are deformed, so he has to spend most of his time in a wheelchair to help him get around. And he does have pretty good mobility within about a one foot range of his uh, body. So if you bring something to him, he can move it around, he can feed himself, but he can't actually reach out and grab anything and bring it to himself by himself. So you can imagine that it's pretty difficult to live like that. It's pretty difficult to be independent. But the most amazing thing is, I've met D several times and he never complains about his condition. Every time I've ever met him, he just has this big smile on his face. But next year, he's gonna go to college, he's gonna graduate from high school, and he's concerned. He's worried about how he's gonna get around on a college campus, about how he's gonna do the things that a normal college kid does. And I get that. Uh, I'm a junior in college right now. I came to college not that long ago. And I know from experience that one of the most attractive things about college is the fact that you finally get to be by yourself. You finally get to be independent. And if things don't change for D, he's not gonna get that. And so when D met with his physician, she asked him, look D, what can we do to help increase your independence? What, what, what do you want? And he said he wanted to be able to reach things. So if he dropped his pencil or his homework off the ground, he wouldn't be able to pick it up or get a snack from a cabinet or his clothes out of a dresser. Really basic things. I want you to take a second and think about that. Think about all of the little things that you did. Now imagine that your arms were only a foot long and you had to do all of those things today. Think about how hard that would have been and you can walk. D can't even walk, he can't use his legs to move things around. He has to do all of that some other way. And so that's where we came in. Like Chris said, my name is Nimish and along with my two teammates, Matthew Najumi and Sergio Gonzalez, we're the three engineers from Rice University who developed the R-Arm, the Robotic Assistive Reaching Mechanism. And it's basically a robotic arm that attaches to his wheelchair that he can use to reach out and grab objects. So how this all started is the three of us met in the fall of 2011 in a freshman engineering design course at Rice University. And basically the way that course works is they put you into teams and they tell you to use the engineering design process to develop solutions for real world problems. And so our challenge was to develop a reaching aid for D that would let him grab basic household objects. And our solution was this robotic arm. And even though a robotic arm is a pretty big stretch for a one semester freshman course in college, uh, and our professors were all pretty skeptical about this kind of solution, when the three of us met Dee for the first time at the hospital, we were so inspired by his story that we wanted to build the best possible solution for him, not the easiest solution. And it didn't take us a semester. It took us three years, but it was completely worth it. Even though we worked in classes, we worked out of classes, we worked in our free time, we stayed there over the summer and we worked over the summer. After all that time, we were able to develop something that could actually change his life. And so before I go any further, I want to take a second to show you guys a little video so you can get an idea of the device. You can see D and you can see how it actually impacts his life. So that's us in the Shrine's Hospital in Houston. We're putting the device in the back of his wheelchair so that he can use it. That's his family. You can already see they're pretty excited about it. When I first thought that I would get an arm, I just didn't know what to think of it. Project for me has helped me 
gain my independence and I, I get to do stuff on my own without relying on anybody. I think it will give other kids and adults their independence. I mean, you can get a feel from that video what kind of impact this is going to have on Dee's life and how excited he is about it. And, and that's exciting for us, you know, that's what really drives us. Uh, but this conference is kind of about cleverness, so I want to talk to you a little bit about our device. Uh, a lot of you might have noticed from the video that Dee controls the R-Arm using a PlayStation 3 controller. And there's a reason for that. I mean, most of you are pretty familiar with the fact that teenagers love video games. And so we use that. We use something that he's familiar with, a video game controller, to control the arm. And it worked. It took him less than 15 minutes to get a hang of using the arm. And he was picking stuff up. And it was fun for him because picking things up was like playing a video game. And there are a lot of really unique things about our design that really make it clever. One of the other things is we put a foot switch in the arm. Basically, sometimes D picks up objects that are too heavy for him to grab off of the gripper with just one hand. So he opens it with the controller and then he grabs it with another hand. But if it's too heavy, he can just press the foot switch with his foot and it opens the gripper and he can use both hands to grab the object and bring it back to him. We also have its high coefficient rubber padding in our gripper. But basically what that is, is just the same material you'd find on your dashboard that keeps your cell phone from sliding around. But we were able to use it to pick up objects of different weights, of different sizes. But the most amazing thing is that we were able to do all of this for just over $1,000. I know that seems like a lot, but let me put that into perspective for you. So there are actually robotic arms that attach to wheelchairs that you can just go out and buy on the market right now. But the reason we didn't just do that for D is because these arms are really, really expensive. The least expensive one starts at $40,000. And the biggest catch is that none of it is subsidized by medical insurance. So I mean, can you imagine that? You have to go in and you have to pay $40,000 out of pocket. Most people can't afford that. That's enough to put a kid in college, to buy a really nice car. D can't afford that. And so the fact that we were able to build this for only $1,000 for him, that's actually not bad. And it's not just a problem for D. You know, $40,000 is a lot for anyone that needs a reaching aid to be able to pay. And there are actually a ton of people that could really use this. So when Rice made our video and it went viral and we started getting millions of hits, we started getting calls and emails from doctors and patients from across the world. We got people in Portugal. We got people literally across the globe saying they wanted this. They wanted to be able to use this. And you know, after all this like fame, a lot of people ask us, so what's next? What are you going to do next? And we want to help these people. That's what we want to do next. We develop something that we think can make a difference in these people's lives, and we want to be able to help them with it. But the thing is, is we're just college kids, and to commercialize this kind of technology, it's gonna cost a lot of money. And we just don't have that kind of money right now. But the three of us are committed to it, we spent three years on it, we wanna keep taking this forward, and so we're gonna take it in baby steps. So this summer, we're gonna build five new arms for five new patients, and we've already identified the patients, we're ready to go, all we have to do is find the funding. And so to do that, we've launched our own fundraising campaign called Project R Arm. We've built our own website at rarm.com, and we're going to use it to collect $25,000 to make this goal a reality. And with just a little bit of support, we can change five lives, and we can take the next step towards making this technology available for anybody that needs it. And the reality is that everyone deserves an opportunity to live their life independently. And that's exactly what we're trying to do, and that's exactly what we were able to do with D. Thank you guys.